So in this question here, we want to find the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of x to the power of sine of x. So first of all, let's plug in zero and see what we've got. So let's call this u of x equals x to the sine of x. And then plug in zero, we've got zero to the sine of zero, which just gives us zero to the zero. So that's inconclusive to find our limit. So now what I'm thinking to find the limit here, can I turn this into a fraction? Well, it doesn't look like so because I've got this sine of x in, as an indice. But if I can take the natural logarithm of this, I could perhaps get that sine of x out and maybe do something with that. So let's take the log of u. So log of u, that equals the log of x sine of x. Now I can see here with my log property, I can bring this sine of x out. So now the log of u equals sine of x log of x. Now we're still not in fraction form, so the Hopital's rule we need a fraction, and then we can take the derivatives of the numerator and denominator. So sine of x, I know I could write that in the denominator as 1 over sine of x, or the log of x, I could write that as 1 over log of x. But then taking the derivative of 1 over log of x, that's still not going to help me because I'm going to st be stuck with log of x no matter how many times I uh, take the derivative of that denominator. So I'm going to put this in the denominator. So now log of u equals log of x divided by 1 over sine of x. That will bring the sine of x back up the top. But then using our trig functions, we know that this is cosecant of x. So ln of u equals ln of x over cosecant of x. So that's how we can set that up and then find the limit of that. So the log of the limit is the same as the limit of the log. So we could take care of this. This we can find derivatives of no problem. And then at the end, if we exponentiate both sides, so if I was just to do this, just to cancel out the logarithm on both sides, that would then give us our result that we're looking for. So let's put this in a box, keep that, that's our building blocks. And now let's just represent our limit with just this bit here. We'll come to the exponential at the very end. So the limit as x approaches zero plus. So instead of this, we're gonna use this. So I've got log of x over cosecant of x. Okay, now that we get log of zero over cosecant of zero. That's un no good to us, that's uh, unidentified. <clears throat> so log of x, <clears throat> so log of x divided by cosecant of x, that's gonna give us an undefined value, got zero, log of zero on the top, and one over zero here on the denominator. So that's no good to us. So let's take the first derivative. So if we turn this into f of x over g of x, and let's find our building blocks, take our derivatives, f prime of x, that's just gonna be derivative of log of x, which is one over x, and the derivative of cosecant of x. So g prime of x. Well, cosecant of x, we can write that as sine of x to the negative one. So using our reciprocal rule, that would just become minus sine of x to the negative two, and then multiplied by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So that'd be our derivative there. Okay, so let's write them in here using our derivative. So now we've got the limit as x approaches zero plus. Now writing that as our derivatives, we've got one over x divided by negative sine of x to the minus two, negative sine of x to the minus two. So that's all inside there. And then cosine of x. Okay, right, let's just tidy this up a little bit. So sine of x to the minus two, I can put sine of x squared in the numerator, bring this x down, keep it with cosine of x, and bring the minus sign up to the top. So let's just tidy this one up a little bit. So x approaches zero plus, keep the one with the minus sign, 
sine of x squared. So that's, I'll just write that as sine squared of x. And then cosine of x will stay in the denominator along with the x. Okay. Now what can I do here? So I've got minus 1, I've got an x. Plug in 0 in here, I'm going to get a 0 on my denominator. So I'm still not ready to get my result. So let's see if there's anything you can do here. Well, I've got sine of x, cosine of x. So that could become tangent x. So I could take that out and call it tangent of x. But I've then still got a sine of x left. So let's write that out and see what we've got. So x approaches 0 plus, got minus. So sine of x, cosine of x, I'm going to call that tangent of x. So that's that and that one gone, one of those. Still got my x in my denominator, and I've got one sine left. OK. So plugging in 0 in here, still no good to me with this x. This tangent x becomes good, and this sine of x is still 0. So what can we do from here? Well, if I just put this sine of x divided by x, that gives me a very famous limit. So if I've got the limit as x approaches 0 plus of sine of x over x, this will give me a result of positive 1. So that's a famous result in limits. So what I could do now is split this up into two limits and use that result to help me get my answer with this tangent of x. So now I've got the limit as x approaches 0 plus. Let's just do minus tangent x on its own. So minus tangent of x. And then multiply it with the limit of sine of x over x. So then multiply the limit as x approaches 0 plus of sine of x over x. So this we know we can just call that 1. This one, what's the limit as this as x approaches 0? Well, tangent of 0 is just 0, and minus of that just still stays as 0. So that becomes 0 times 1 situation, which just gives me 0. So that's the result of my limits. So they are valid. Now I come to my answer. I've got e to the ln of u equals e to the ln of x over cosecant of x. So then e to the ln of u, well, they just cancel out and I'm just left with u. And then I need to exponentiate my rule, uh, my result of my limits. So that equals e to the power of 0. e to the power of 0 is just 1, so u will equal 1. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 plus of x to the sine of x would just give me 1. So that's the answer to our question. And then we are done. Okay.